So the big one for me is Katniss Everdeen because she's like the most, she's probably the best modern example. It may be best example period of a, of a female character doing like a hero's journey in both the Campellian and the um, <laughs> Vogler <laughs> sense. Cause I feel like there is a little bit of a difference in how they talk about the hero's journey possibly. We'll see when I read the book, if I still feel that way. Cause like one thing in particular that that kind of threw me off a little bit um, and maybe this is easy to answer since after what you just said, but um, cause you're talking about sort of the difference between the native culture and the, um, and like a, 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 or a an other culture, right? Um, because I don't see, I don't see that the hero's journey requires that per se. Like I think about like, if the call to adventure could be something pretty simple, um, it could be, you know, there's something in your garden that's, that's, there's a, there's a fairy in your garden. I know that that brings you somewhere. Um, and, um, and so to me, it, that kind of threw me off. Cause I was like, well, I don't know that that, that it would be any less of a hero's journey, say, if you're Alice going down, you know, and maybe you're just dreaming the whole thing or, or if you're Katniss, cause for Katniss, I feel like she is kind of leaving her culture cause she's, she's going from district 12 to the capital, <laughs> which Panam, is, right. a, and she has, Panam, yeah, and she has a, she has a, a complete, like, um, like culture shock situation going on there too, because it's completely different. Um, but so I just, I'd love to hear you like kind of go into that more and like, well, there, there's maybe it's easy, yeah. So like you guys, I think you both have done this. We are kindred in that, <laughs> like you, I have sat down and try mm -hmm. and watch the movies and just plug them into the hero's journey. I'm not kidding. Yeah. I'd have either a laptop on my lap or a pen and paper mm -hmm. and I'd just sit there and watch. And then I'm like, okay, that's the call to adventure. <laughs> nice. And then I'd, I'd plug it all into an Excel spreadsheet and then I'd go through the Excel spreadsheets and I, then I'd write it all up. Like it was insanity, but we're writers. So that's mm -hmm. normal for us. But right. um, uh, so I would spend a lot of time trying to plug movies into the hero's journey. And there's obviously nothing wrong with that. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, there's, that's the only model we've really had to judge it by. So, and you know how it goes. Sometimes it's a stretch. To be like, well, that's kind of the wise mentor, you know. So sometimes it's a stretch, and a lot mm -hmm. of times, or let's say some of the times, it doesn't. It's not a perfect fit. Um, mm -hmm. So what, what what I've always tried to do is try to figure out does this fit structurally, even if it's not a perfect match to what Joseph Campbell defines. And you know, I've most of the movies I looked at, I did look at through the hero's journey. Um, but and this is just me. I'm the only person on earth right now because I have this other model. I'm looking at it structurally from a different standpoint. So okay. it's not that the hero's journey would not apply or should be disqualified or eliminated from the conversation. That's not what I'm saying. There's certainly a case to be made that there are hero's journey tropes in, in uh, um, uh, Hunger Games, for example. Mm -hmm. But for me, once I've, had, once I've defined the heroine's labyrinth, when I was watching Hunger Games or reading Hunger Games, uh, I started to see it from a different perspective and I began to shift more toward the, the heroine's labyrinth. That doesn't disqualify my other thoughts on it or your thoughts on it by any stretch. Um, okay. But for instance, like the sacred fire, Hunger Games has one of the coolest sacred fire moments of all. Like she, they literally, she catches fire in front of everybody, uh, in front of it, and that, the, she's the girl on fire. Like it becomes like a massive theme throughout the whole story. So she's got one of the greatest symbolic sacred fire moments out there. And the hero's journey doesn't really have much to say on that necessarily. Um, and I do think that it, it's not that it's absent from the hero's journey, but uh, it's certainly more featured and prominent in the heroine's labyrinth. Second, the villain is a member of her native culture. He's a social apex character in President Snow. Uh, but there are aspects of the hero's journey, too, in that she's uh, there's a lot of combat and she's set in this exotic location. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, trying. I mean, it's a survival situation. Uh, but there's also a poisoned apple. She gets stung by tracker jackers and her she she's disoriented uh, in a way which is very typical for heroines in a heroine's labyrinth story. So I began to see all these other themes that lined up with the heroine's labyrinth. But I'm the only guy that's got all this. <laughs> so um, so I have this whole different viewpoint of it that I'm like an island right now. But um, right, right. For you know, now. So <laughs> it's harder to share all of that. But or to, or to have a bunch of people talk that have see, matched this up. But um, right. I, I definitely see a lot of the tropes from the Heroine's Labyrinth with Katniss Everdeen. One of my one of my observations was that a lot of heroine stories have revolutionary, uh, not all of them, but like there's a revolutionary that was aspect. Interesting thing, yeah. I mean, there's almost none better than Katniss Everdeen. She's like the ultimate revolutionary figure. Yeah. Um, you'll even see in, in artwork, um, a lot of revolutionary artwork feature a woman. In fact, John Wick 4. 
Remember that discussion in the uh, uh, museum, Heath? They're having. That oh discussion. yes, yes. It's underneath. Yes. What was it's this that huge painting? painting of the Revolution of France? It's a woman. She's topless with the flag of France, and she's like front and center in the. The Statue of Liberty uh, holding the sacred fire of freedom uh, mm -hmm. for the United States. Well, I mean, you said revolutionary uh, women. I immediately thought Molly Pitcher. Molly, yeah. Well, the see, more you look at it, the more you'll find there's Joan of Arc, uh, Bodeca. I mean, there's so many yeah. uh, figures historically. But there is something archetypal, it seems to me, that's associating the feminine hero with, yes. with uh, a revolution. And I think it's because- I've observed this too. I, I agree with you quite a lot on that one, yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's because of this rub with the native culture. Heroines tend to be good models for challenging the native culture. Uh, hmm. And and so that's why I think there's a relationship. And I'm, cut me off whenever you want. But um, I, Oh, no, no. <laughs> I want to hear you. I'm, I'm here to talk to you. So, <laughs> <laughs> Liberty Leading the People. That's the name of that painting that they were having that discussion in John. That's, what's funny is Liberty that's the picture I have in my manuscript under okay. revolution. I have a, a genre no, section you. like as an, in an appendix. And uh, what, I was trying to talk about the genres where the heroine's labyrinth structure works so well with certain genres and revolutionary tales is one of the genres. And that's the, that's the picture I use is that picture from John Wick. Hmm. That's interesting. Real. From revolutionary France, but it's in John Wick. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, I, I, I wanted to mention one other thing about about um, Katniss before moving on to another She's thing. Um, uh, yeah, because one of the things one of the things that I absolutely loved um, that you were talking about was the the concept around the refusal of the call. Um, oh. Now, 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 one thing that <laughs> I'm not sure that I'm I am convinced that the refusal of the call is like a necessary step in the hero's journey only because I don't see that originally with Campbell. I know Volgar says that. Um, but I do love your idea on why someone would refuse or not refuse. That it has something to do with how dangerous their journey is going to be and how much it is risks their life. That if it is dangerous, then they're going to be more likely to be like, well, I don't know about that. Um, so that yeah. seems to me like, a, <laughs> that seems to be a, like a very useful thing for writers. The only problem is that Katniss technically should have also refused by that framework but because she was also going to probably die um so that's that's it's like true. an interesting kind of like it just kind of made sense in the context of her story that she would be willing because she's doing it for her sister so i feel like Perfect there's point. like another principle there where it just kind of depends on the me the names of the story but i think your principle there is probably like the the a good go-to to start with like should they refuse or not um, it's a good yeah. criteria to judge because I'll, I'll explain myself too I actually yeah. was judging heroines based on the hero's journey and getting like frustrated. I thought hero like writers were skipping all these steps and mm -hmm. I thought they were doing it to make the heroines look better. That's what I thought I was wrong. Right. Um, but I started writing this entire article called the incomplete heroine. And that was just, they never refused yeah. the call and that shouldn't that, right. that, that, you know, they, and I was going, but is that, nah, 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 nah. I mean, why does it have to be a step? That's what I'm like. Well, I mean, whatever. That's a whole other conversation. But. <laughs> well, so true, uh, and that's that's actually a, a separate discussion. I would say, is, right, right. Um, from a writing standpoint, is it do we have to follow these rules? The answer from a writing point is always no. <laughs> right. Whatever works is what you should do. Uh, mm -hmm. But when you enter into these archetypes, if, if you're there, if that's in your story, you should recognize it and build it out. Be a key element. Um, but you're right. Katniss doesn't refuse the call. Uh, I actually quote her in the book. I might have to take it out. I heard you can't use quotes in books, but um, she's like, I oh, volunteer as tribute. There's no, mm -hmm. I mean, she is absolutely clear about it. Right. The only thing I could say is she's behaving more like a shield maiden, which is a hero in trope where she is literally, mm -hmm. leap she's not physically leaping in front of her sister, I don't think, but um, she's clearly doing mm -hmm. it to save her sister. So there's a, right. there's a, it, there's an uncon, uh, what's an instinctive, immediate, reaction to defend mm. another person uh and and that's the spirit she seems to be responding to so um you're right it doesn't fit into my two criteria but she clearly refused she she jumps at the call which i find to be typical of heroines um mm. but it seems to be for a different reason right it is it's kind of a different one like because because you're I, I i definitely see the pattern you're describing where it's like a lot of heroines are going to it's like they don't want to be at home, right? Like they, it, that's something that's oppressive. Um, and so they'd rather leave and go on this adventure. But in her case, she doesn't want to go on the adventure. She just wants to break her sister. So I guess that kind of goes to the yeah. principle of like, it depends on the story sometimes. Um, uh, sure. Yeah, I guess that's just- Well, she's acting heroically. I mean, yeah. she's, it's not like they said, hey, who wants to volunteer? And she's like, <laughs> I will volunteer. You yeah, know, no. 
they were going to take her sister and she was emphatic. You cannot do this. I'm going to take me in, in, in her place. And she did it without even thinking. And uh, then you're right. Then she ends up in the survival situation. <laughs> but technically, you're right. Uh, the likelihood of her destruction was very high uh, to enter the Hunger Games. So, but right. yeah, there was no real. It's An not like she's like, I'm not right here. Wait. You could take my sister. <laughs> she didn't. She didn't do that. She didn't. <laughs> there's, there's there's a, it, I was just gonna say there's a there's a um, parody of that that where the opposite happens. I think. <laughs> oh. so it's some the starving games anyway. Oh, where she's like, take my sister instead. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not very heroic. 